A very good evening and a warm welcome once again for another session of Family Prayer with the Redemptress Psalms for Life. My dear friends, for the entire month of July, we began the session with a hymn as the deer yearns for running waters. And today, as we come to the final session of Psalms for life for this month, I would like to reflect with you, pray with you. Psalm 42. It is one of my personal favorites. The reason is, this psalm has so much to offer. It is a psalm that is filled with passion for love for God, for worship. It is filled with powerful imagery. The language is intense that it invites the reader to feel what the psalmist is saying or feeling. And therefore it makes a wonderful psalm for us this evening to pray along with. Before we start the psalm, I invite you to pray with me, asking the Lord to give us the grace to make this time a time of prayer and reflection. Loving Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gift of this day. We thank you for giving us this time to reflect on this beautiful psalm, a psalm that is so much filled with passion for your love and worship. The very thought that you yourself would have used this psalm makes us feel special to pray the psalm now, today in our lives. Even as we pray the psalm, may you give us the grace and the consolation that this psalm offers, the consolation the psalmist at the end finds for himself. The same consolation that millions have found praying the psalm for centuries. May we come close to you, recognize your presence in our lives, find new orientation in our faith journey. We make our prayer to you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Before I read the psalm for you and pray along with you, let's briefly consider the structure and authorship of the psalm. Psalm 42, according to scholars, continues into Psalm 43. Many scholars would consider that Psalm 42 and Psalm 43 would make one psalm. The reason being, 
the refrain or the chorus is found three times and the third time the same chorus is found in Psalm 43 verses 5. Along with it, the language, the vocabulary and the theme very much flows through Psalm 42 and 43. But for our consideration today, we will only pray Psalm 42. So it would be part one and part two. The first part of the Psalm would be from verses one to five, ending with this beautiful chorus or the refrain of hope and new orientation. And the second part is from verses six to 11, again, concluding with the same words, with the same hope and reorientation. In terms of understanding into which group it would fall, it is a lament, it is a cry in distress. It is a psalm of disorientation, but leading towards new orientation. There is some kind of resolution at the end. The psalmist does find that God is with him in spite of his crisis and difficulty. There is a journey that the psalmist makes through the psalm. While he begins with a complaint, his complaint transforms into a petition. He prays to God. And then finally, it transforms into prayer, an act of faith that is filled with hope. And therefore, it is a journey in faith, we could say. In terms of authorship, the superscription of the Psalm 42 indicates that it connects it with the Korite collection of Psalms, that is Psalms 42 to 49. Who was a Korah? A Korah was a Levite and a leader of the guild of Psalmists. We read in the first Chronicles chapter 9, 19, that they were responsible to guard the entrance of the holy tent, the dwelling of the Most High. And therefore, it would be of a priestly class. Well, keeping this in mind, we shall now read Psalm 42 and reflect and pray and stop at important points to see what does the psalmist tell us and how does he invite us to join in his faith journey in finding hope in God. Let us take a moment to listen and to pray the psalm together. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all the day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God. With glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. My soul is cast down within me, therefore I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls. At your breakers and your waves have gone over me. By the day, Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning? Because of the oppression of the enemy. 
As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me. While they say to me all the day long, Where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. The first verse. As a deer pans for flowing streams, so pans my soul for you, O God. A powerful imagery of a deer thirsting for water. But unless we understand the context in which the psalmist is trying to paint this image, probably, probably we wouldn't grasp the intensity of the language. The book of Joel, chapter 120, gives us that background to this imagery. He says, Even the wild animals pant for you. The streams of water have dried up and fire has devoured the pastures in the wilderness. Now try to imagine this. It is not an ordinary everyday thirst for water. The deer that is yearning for a running stream is one that is running away to save its life from fire. On one side, it is running away to save its life, but on the other side, there's nothing for it to live on. It is dehydrated. It has breathed the smoke and the heat has almost consumed it. And now, while it is battling between life and death, it yearns for water. So it is a matter of life and death for this deer. That is the depth of craving the psalmist is trying to portray, picture for us. It indicates for us how important it is for us to find God to live. For the psalmist, when he says he's yearning for running streams, he's talking about his own inner yearning for God. That if he does not find God, he can't live. It is a matter of life and death for him. That's how intense, that's how deep his craving for God. When he says, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Now the term come before God indicates the presence of a temple. He's thinking of himself of the past days when he was able to be present in the temple and worship God. So there is this indication of him worshipping God in the temple and now is asking God, how can I encounter God once again through those moments of worship? When he speaks about his soul, like as we have already considered in the previous sessions, for the psalmist, the soul is not a spiritual entity as distinct from the physical body. It's not a spiritual entity, but rather for him, the soul is his entire self, especially his, his deeper self, his emotions. From the depth, he cries out to God. In other words, that, that his desire to meet God is of his entire soul, his entire self. Now, his thirst for God could also be examined as a search for encounter of God, a God experience. Now, when we think of ourselves, we all crave for God's presence in our lives. We talk about God experience. We find people going from place to place, trying to have an experience of God. We ourselves, during our spiritual journey, through our faith journey, we want to encounter God, especially through our moments of crisis, we try to encounter God. And so often we find prayer as a moment when we could encounter God. 
a spiritual exercise of reading the scriptures, a participation in a pilgrimage, worship, or sometimes as simple as just standing on, on your terrace and gazing into the sky and recognizing how small we are in front of the entire creation and, and acknowledging the mighty God who has created all of us sometimes gives us an experience of God. But for the psalmist, his experience of God is very specific. He's talking about his experience in worship along with his community in the temple. That's what he is missing. That's what he craves for. He, he hopes that one day he could go back to that time of worship. We have verse 3 where the psalmist would say, My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all the day long, Where is your God? The word tears is a very powerful symbol or imagery here for the psalmist. As he would say, as, as in the previous psalms, we would see that the psalmist who lives in the temple or serves in the temple, for him, his food came in the presence of God. In other words, like to be in the presence of God was his food. But now, tears have become his food. He's the one who craves for, for the living water, the refreshing water of worship. But now, he has to satisfy himself or he is He's in a situation where the waters of tears have become his food day and night. And then he speaks about the taunts of his neighbor. Now this gives a background of being in exile, being away from his people, from his own place of worship, being in another place where his neighbors who are pagans are taunting him asking him, where is your God? Now this could indicate that the psalmist being away, missing his temple, has also a kind of sense of lack of identity as it were. Because for the Jews, temple gave an identity of who they were. Now for him, when he is away, now the very temple that gave identity to him is taken away from him. He struggles to make sense of who he is. And in this situation, when his neighbors ask this question, where is your God? He cries out to God. As it were, that as if God has allowed this, that a pagan could look at him and ridicule him and ask this question. It's not just an insult for him, but he says he's ridiculing in the God that he believes. That God has allowed this to happen. And therefore, that also indicates how deep his cry is. Then he goes on to say, These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude keeping festival. A clear indication has he played an important role in the communal worship of the Jewish faith practice in the temple. It's been almost four months that the churches have been shut due to the pandemic. this time of the lockdown throughout has indeed created a sense of loss for most of us. We remember the days when our religious identity came from being present in, in the church, our Sunday masses, being part of the novenas, or being part of the church choir, or being part of the other organizations or of Vincent de Paul, of Legion of Mary, participating in the processions, 
flag hoisting. They meant so much to us. But now, as it were, it seems that it's all taken away from us. We are now locked in our homes and we are, as it were, we miss, we crave for that moment. We, we are begging God that, that God may save the world from this pandemic so that we may go back to those days when we can go to our churches, to our communities and worship together as a community. And this craving for this communal worship is just not a simple sense of loss, but rather it's a deep craving to worship together. And thus, finally, he ends the first part with this powerful refrain, as he says, Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. This rich refrain, as it brings to close to the first part of Psalm 42, it also gives a sense of hope. The psalmist is talking to himself at this moment. He's trying to tell himself, he's trying to convince himself that why have you given yourself into, into despair? Rise up. There is hope. The days that you yearn for will be restored. There is an act of faith. There is an act of hope that the psalmist shares in his refrain. When the psalmist also speaks to himself, it also indicates an inner struggle. When he misses his worship as a community, but also the other aspect of faith is also his own personal journey with God. It's the same for us, isn't it? On one side, we miss our worship with God, worship of God in the community. When we miss our worship of God in the community, but also it is important for us to consider what has this time of lockdown of the pandemic has done to our personal faith journey, a personal relationship with God. It is true that because of the pandemic, the church has dispensed the obligation of going to Sunday Mass. There is no confessions available. Priests are not available. There are no public retreats. Spiritual exercises are almost nil. But have I made an effort to find other ways to come closer to God? As this sense of craving for God has moved me personally to find other ways to build my relationship with God. Perhaps a few extra minutes to read the Word of God. Perhaps a few extra minutes to spend time with God in prayer and reflection, a personal rosary. Or attending an online service like the way we have it now. Have I made an effort to come close to God even when publicly I'm not able to exercise my faith? The psalmist continues in verse 6 onwards. My soul is cast down within me, therefore I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Harman, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls. All your breakers and your waves have gone over me. The second movement in the psalm again picks up by expressing how heavy the present situation is on him. The crisis is so unbearable that he feels like the roaring waters of a waterfall falling over him. 
Now just remind yourself the last time you went and stood in under a waterfall. Perhaps you would have picked a small stream and you would have enjoyed the cool waters falling on your back. But he is not talking about a small stream or small waterfall. He's talking about a roaring waterfall. The very image frightens us. And that's how intense he feels the pain of separation from God, from place of worship and from his community. Sometimes even in our own lives, we are in such crisis that we feel so engulfed that we feel that we are almost lost in midst of our crisis, that we struggle to find any meaning in what we are looking for. We yearn for an escape from that crisis. Perhaps some of you may be going through that crisis right now in your life, maybe in your family, maybe financially, or maybe in terms of health. Your experience may be that of the psalmist who feels that his situation is so intense that it is so unbearable. But then he says, by day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life, I say to God my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me, while they say to me all the day long, where is your God? In spite of his experience, in spite of his pain being so intense, the psalmist does not distance himself from God. Rather, his situation makes his inner self crave for God. As he says, by the day the Lord commands his steadfast love. He recognizes that love, that steadfast love of God. And when he speaks about his song in the night, it also indicates he is a man of prayer, that even though he misses his communal service, but at night, at home, he is still in, in, in connection with God through prayer. A prayer to God of my life, he says. I say to God, my rock. He still makes an act of faith, acknowledging that God is still his rock, who is steadfast and faithful to his calling, that God still hears his prayer. Then finally, at the end of his cry, once again he sings the refrain, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. My dear friends, for the Jewish mystics of, of the ascetic movement, they always stressed this point, that God is neither absent nor hidden, but always present, no matter what the circumstances are, no matter how intense their crisis, or how grievous their pain is, God is always present and he hears the cry of the one who calls out to him. It is with that faith that the psalmist ends the psalm today. Even as we conclude, I invite you to pray along with me. Loving Lord Jesus, on the day when you met the Samaritan woman at the well, you asked her for water. Then you told her about the living water that would quench her thirst forever. You promised her that living water. Lord, today as we have prayed along with the psalmist, our innermost craving for you 
to be united with you, to worship you, to behold your face. We pray along with the psalmist. We pray along with the Samaritan woman at the well. Give me the living water. We surrender all that occupies our mind, our lives today. The dreadful situation of the pandemic, the struggles that people are going through, our own personal struggle in our families. Though at times it may seem so overwhelming, we believe you would hold our hands and walk with us. And at the end of our journey, we have hope, we have victory, we have consolation in you. May we become stronger in our faith. May we have the same faith as the psalmist who said, Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. Amen. That brings to the end of today's Psalms for Life, Psalm 42. Perhaps you are wondering, what are we planning for the month of August? Well, I'm glad to tell you, our response for Psalms for Life for this month was quite positive. We had an online uh, survey and um, we requested people to vote what was their favorite evening prayer. And I myself was surprised to know that 63% of people or those who voted um, said Psalms for Life was their favorite one. So considering the positive feedback that we got from you, we have decided to continue Psalms for Life for the month of August as well. We have covered quite a number of Psalms for this month, but we have a lot more to pray and reflect. So therefore, next Monday, once again, we would join you again praying the Psalms together, and we will continue Psalms for Life for the month of August as well. So do share the word with your friends and neighbors, family, about family prayer with the Redemptress, and may the word of God continue to enrich us. Let me conclude by giving you the final blessing. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Good night, and God bless you. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Lift up the banner, let the anthem ring to Christ our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He.